jewelry is one of her specialties, and we'll show you her jewelry case up front too. It is full of amazing, wonderful things. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. So I'm with my friend at the Mayaca River State Park in Florida. This is the canopy walk, this swinging bridge. And it is cool. When you get into the rural interior where things have been left alone, Florida is quite amazing because it's actually very green. A lot of the flowers and things you see in Florida have been brought in from other places in the world. But in reality, there's this crazy world of life above us here. This is like a bridge. See the bromeliads, the air plants hanging in the trees there. It's a little bouncy because, well, this bridge is a little bouncy. Spanish moss is one of my favorite things. And then the lookout, here we go. I guess you can tell where I am. I am finally redoing my space at Vintage Modern St. Pete. It's been a long, hot summer, and they've actually sold quite a lot, especially considering that it's summer, and that's usually the slow season in Florida, but it doesn't seem like there's much of one anymore, so I had a lot of catch-up to do. <laughs> they told me a lot of folks have been to see my booth here and that they were a little embarrassed for me because I let it go so long, and I really do have to try to get here more often. So I'm gonna start by showing you what I did to my booth. I really tried to renovate it <clears throat> and bring in some good things so that those of you folks who come to see it will actually see something really fun, fresh, and new here. And then I'm also gonna show you what else is new around the store, but let's start with my main space. I had sold so much stuff, other than I do have a lot of the art on the wall still, but I had sold so much stuff that Everything that was left in the booth actually ended up just in this section here, unbelievably. I still have the mirrored Parsons table. I think it's been a little hard to see, so now it'll show better. And I tried to do a lot of Floridiana and things like that here. I also was able to put this up because the Finding Nemo poster sold, so we have another movie poster in its place. And then in the main body of the space, well, let's widen out here so you can see it all at once. And yes, it is very crowded and it is very colorful because I got a lot of really pretty glass when I went to visit Arlen Bayless, the Blanco designer, and meet him for the first time. I think in my space, I'm gonna start at the top and go down. So first we'll show you this, the World Champion Clydesdales. These spinners are really hard to find working anymore. And this one is from an old liquor store in the area that the family sold out after 55 years and closed down and I was able to get this from them and it works, it's wonderful. They're not that easy to get hold of. We've got the Blanco West Virginia Day green and blue vase to the right and a studio piece here and then this very large, I brought a lot of Blanco today, some really good pieces and a lot of fresh stock. This 6541 vase I actually showed on Thrift Battle at one point. This is the Storini vase. It's the first period in the papaya. Then let's take a look here. This is a really big stack vase. This is by Arlen Bayless. I just had the opportunity to meet him for the first time. He was 
Blanco's designer from 2007 to 2014, I believe, if I have those dates right. And he made some really neat stuff, including this design. Also this swirl piece here. Speaking of swirls, this is a Pilgrim glass vase from the 1980s in a green slag. They did not do this for very long. This was not a thing they typically had made, so it was a little out of character for them, but I like the effect. And then the bottle there is a Blanco 920. Let me get it in a better light where you can see how pretty it is with the crackle. <clears throat> Crackle's really cool to me. I mean, it's a simple process. They just take the item while it's still on the rod and dunk it in water really quickly and then keep heating it so that it fuses back together. But it's a great effect. This is Michael Weiss, 1977, an artist from Israel. This is called Eyeless in Gaza. Very soulful expression. It's number two of only ten textured paper to get the design. So there is the shark fin. This was used on the set of Miami Vice, amongst other things. It was rented out by a movie prop operation in Miami. And Miami Vice was one of the main users of these before CGI. It is sitting on a really good Salterini bench, which I hope people notice under there because it's at $700, probably the most expensive thing I have in the booth. But, you know, I load the booth down because I am going to be gone for a little while, and I hate to hear that people who watch the show have come in and then saw the booth in disheveled shape and without enough merchandise, so we're going to fix that. Here are a pair of Challenger water skis. Still have the art that I had before. I haven't had a lot of art sales. This seems like something that does better in the winter here when people are indoors more. These two Blanco pieces are amazing. These are both Arlen Bayless also. These are related to the Europa line. And I especially like the big tall purple one with that pole that is something close to 40 inches tall. Right now it's $280. In the future, I have a feeling it'll be a lot more because of the height. We know what's happening with swung vases that are that size. And then we have the blue two-lobed vase. And then we have the orange sickle colored vase. This is a fairly new color for Blanco, and I just love it. It's a neon orange. These are all Woodard and Salterini related, too. I stacked them on top of each other because I needed the height, but this is a two-stacking handled little table, tier table, that you could carry around. This was a small end table, and this was a larger outdoor table. The abacus lamp, I think, is really fun. I just got that yesterday, and it's an older one. It's from the late 40s, early 50s. Ben Seibel casserole is something fresh and new. And then I got a bunch of Sasha Brastoff rooftops. You see the three bowls there with the various rooftop designs. That was one of the more popular lines that Sasha did. I always thought it was pretty neat looking. The West Virginia Day Bass one year was this one that leans slightly and looks like a guitar. That was the idea. And then I always get a kick out of these. These little flasks. Flasks always seem to sell well and this one has a great little poem on it. When your heels hit hard and your head feels queer and your thoughts foam up like the froth on a beer. When your legs are weak and your voice is strong and you laugh like hell at some damn fool song, you're drunk, my gosh, you're drunk. And there it shows you your limits. One drink, two drinks, half fool, damn fool. <laughs> These are usually sold as souvenirs. This one's marked Great Barrington, Massachusetts, where it came from. I thought the Aerie sculpture was a neat one. That's a presentation piece. I sold two of the Umlauf stools. I still have two left in stock. And then, of course, I brought this crazy lamp that I've shown, the 1920s Miami-made lamp that was sold to the tourists and made of beachcombed items and looks like a fish. If you look straight down, you see the little fish face there. And these little guys. And some other local interest here. This is a zine, and yes, you younger folks, really younger folks, might not know what a zine is, and you older folks might not either, but in the 1990s, it was very popular to make very small publications, usually having to do with music. This is related to Tampa bands, and it was basically a fan magazine, or a zine. 
This one's called White Rabbit, and it talks everything about someone went to CEO and what that was like, and who's topping the charts, and what's going on on the club scene. This is the kind of thing that becomes collectible later because the people who were into this never thought to keep it when it was new. This is really neat. This is one of the original nine land boom era hotels in St. Petersburg. It is now a college. It was called the Roll Yacht back then in Pasadena on the Gulf, St. Petersburg, Florida. And it says it's America's most distinctive hotel. And I have to say it was pretty distinctive and it still has all these wonderful buildings and all these plazas. The Cape Canaveral set is a really cool thing. A magic Marxy toy. And then I brought in the metal garbage can. I already had the batik roller table here. And I added some new lighting above me that you can see. So thankfully I have the space in some sort of repair and order so that you folks who are coming to Florida between now and the time that I get back to do shows in mid-November will have an opportunity to see something nice. Let's show you what else is new in the mall. There's a lot of really cool stuff. A whole line of Empoli glass mixed with chalet. These big swing pieces here with the very long poles are chalet glass from Canada. Love that stuff. It's just such a great, vibrant, dynamic shape. And then a lot of Empoli glass. This is a Kip Stewart design for Drexel. And the knobs on here fool people because they think, oh, they've been replaced, but no, these are the original knobs. They're just little white porcelain poles. And this was part of the Declaration line, priced at $16.95. And then the Jaru Dancers, I think those are really graceful too, at $175 out of California. This thing is so heavy, it's not even off the cart yet. And the spilled cup of coffee is a fake, don't worry. Uh, but this is a signed artisan crafted burl table and this was a fellow in Oregon who did these in the 1980s. I remember seeing them up there and what was so great about it is he would find burl and use burl as the base. It's a burl table with a burl base and that really makes such a difference in the design and that's the reason it's priced at $12.50. His name was Sam Clausen and it was out of Overton, Oregon. So you will see these occasionally in the Northwest. It's a surprise to find one in Florida. This space is brand new to, to the mall, and this is an experienced local dealer who has really cool stuff. I like the teak Danish cart particularly. This one is actually solid wood, and that's the reason it's $500 as opposed to half that price for one that is not solid wood. There's a lot of teak veneer, particularly a lot of the tie pieces from the 1980s. And then this is the credenza that goes along with the lame brutalism similar to the chest of drawers that I sold here recently. This was actually part of the Staccata collection and it's priced at $24.99. Some neat Big Hager pieces up here. Big Hager is starting to sell and the prices on these are really pretty good. Um, the one on the left, the one with the craft allure is only $69. I know Yvonne Thrifty Rich recently sold a black swan for $140. These magazine racks made in Denmark with the canvas that hangs and that's where you put the magazines. Very popular again. And this one's priced at 110. This case belongs to Marty. He used to manage a big antique mall in the area and he retired and he's now selling here as a dealer and apparently doing very well. And I'm not surprised because he has so much of the stuff that people are after in this area. From the flamingo you see there to these little crackle glass ewers. He's also got a lot of little critters, and you know, people just love this sort of thing. I watched a woman buy four of them this morning. Pewter cars. You know, he's smart because he carries a lot of small things that are easy and recognizable to people who are here on vacation from elsewhere. You don't necessarily have to be a serious collector to understand why Siamese cats are cool, for example. This front space has a new dealer as well. This is Tawny. Tawny had refound antiques down the street, but she's closed the shop and so she is selling here now. Jewelry is one of her specialties and we'll show you her jewelry case up front too. It is full of amazing, wonderful things. You can see the 14 karat gold little lavalier with the coral piece in the middle priced at 225. dollars Bunch of wonderful stick pins in the $40 range in that old box to the right. 
I really like the Art Deco pin in the middle of this grouping. And of course the 14 karat gold with the painted cherub, you can't go wrong with that, $8.95. Very pretty amethyst necklace for $1.95 on the right on that white stand. Look at all the draping on that. That is a really pretty design. Tani also is known for white furniture, some of which she redoes, but a lot of it is just what she looks for. She also has a nice little grouping of bigger, fancier turquoise rings and this very nice squash blossom necklace for $12.95. A bunch of cuffs with the coral in them. These are all Navajo, it appears. This is a new display. You see the big crocodile. That was made in Kenya about 1970 carved and cold painted. That is a really neat piece. They have it priced at $1,200. There's a big piece of petrified wood in the middle there. And then this is a Mayan burial urn on the left here. It's a 20th century version, but it is a really neat looking piece. Next to the great Irfila Night Art Deco Toucan, which is a very famous Czech made picture sold in the United States in the 1930s, is the goat. You don't see that one at all. I just love these two together. They are so fantastic. The design is just amazing. Urfila would have a lot of different companies in Czechoslovakia make the pieces, but they could only say Czechoslovakia, and then they had to have the Urfila. E-R was Ebling and Russ out of Philadelphia, thus Urfila. Now back here, we see that there is a bunch of tooled leather on the top. These are relatively recent pieces. These are Patricia Nash. This is a name to know because you will see this stuff out there in the marketplace and the prices are not cheap. $75 on the little bag there. This little purse is priced at 48. So definitely a name worth picking up if you're seeing it in thrifts. But what it's sitting on is a four-piece bedroom set motif by Thomasville, another mid-century modern. I like these handles in particular with the cutouts. You can see it a little better over on this tall chest here, the way that those are made. Really great set of red Bakelite in here. 46 pieces for $4.95. That's just over $10 a piece. It's about the going rate for this stuff, and the handles have a neat curve to them. These are going to be 1940s. Your on a glass hand mirror is very pretty out of the 60s. This is Hazelton stainless steel. That's another collectible line of metalwork out of Pennsylvania. And then they have a big, big, big collection of George Jensen and other related sterling. Most of it is Danish. And you see the prices on these. This is definitely a name to look for. And these prices are prices that will sell. You can see some holes here where they've already made sales. The people who know George Jensen really understand the pricing and they know why it's good and they know why it costs this much. Part of the reason, as you can see on this bag with the earrings, is that Georg Jensen had a shop on Fifth Avenue in New York. So the chair I'm sitting in is a Gaston Rinaldi, and it is called the Pan Am chair. Let me show you. It's very comfortable because it has this big pad in the middle, and it shapes very nicely to you when you sit in it. It looks a little lumpy when you're not in it. You can see, and it is a very famous design, and a really good design, I think. It's very form-fitting, I have to say. It's very comfortable the way it's done. Nice little Brasilia cabinet here. This one almost looks like it's a record player, but I'll bet it's a bar. It looks like it has sections that lift up there. Let's see if we can tell. I love that the handles even have that big swoop to them. Let's take this off and see what's inside if we can. Oh, I see. Yes, it is a server or a bar because it's going to fold open so that you get extra space. Pretty handy. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time showing you this. This is Tani, my friend who is friends with the big antique dealer in West Palm Beach, who you saw, and she does very cool stuff also. Look at these, they're only $25, these huge 1975 era lucite 
glittery big hoops. That seems like a great deal. That looks like a really amazing cuff that you could cut somebody with. I see everything from Juliana to Bakelite on that shelf. A whole lot of textured 1960s stone pins. I see the Weiss Jamrock there, or Weiss. The black one that almost looks like Marcus Ices are rhinestones, actually, though. She really does get a lot of beautiful stuff. I love this whole cluster of 1960s and 70s butterflies in the middle here. And she gets some pretty serious stuff as well. I mean, in addition to some fun wearable stuff. bunch of Christmas tree pins there. So this is a really nice addition to the store because the store has always been a really good store with a small amount of costume jewelry and now it has a really good representation. I like that set. You've got the pin, the cuff, and the earrings in the Renoir with the green on copper. The teak and woven armchairs here are by Nobler, and those are priced at $4.25 for the pair. This dealer has a butterfly display, and they also have this cased glass world globe. Big skookum doll here, similar to the one I have out most for sale. And then this is a pretty classic design by Paul McCobb. Very squarish, very upright, one pad. You would obviously use a bolster or a throw pillow with this, but it is very comfortable. It's priced at $1,800. Paul McCobb is a serious designer and commands serious money. I personally really like the lipstick red upholstery on these. These are also Umanoffs, who is the designer of my bar stools. But these stools are part of the Granada line, and you can tell they did a lot of dining room furniture and patio furniture like this as well, and these interlocking curly cues are your clue as to the design. Well, it's really fun to be back here. It's fun to be seeing what's fresh and new in the store since I was last here. And thankfully now I have some fresh and new things in the store. So I invite all of you, if you are in the St. Petersburg, Florida area, come on out to Vintage Modern St. Pete. There's a lot of fun, new, fresh stock here to see. And I'm glad that I am participating in that. This showcase is a new dealer as well. And they have a lot of glass and they have some interesting things like this. Swedish decanter in the ruby with the turned up, but then they also have some really neat pieces like this dog bowl here. Man's best friend, his dog, 1930s. Really like the red paisley. This set of glasses is 250 for all of them. Very popular right now. Some gold Italian fruit as well. And then they've got this piece down here. This is Catalina pottery, this big turquoise carafe. Wrigley of Wrigley's Chewing Gum started that pottery on the island of Catalina and then Franciscan bought it and brought it over to the mainland. This is an interesting menu from the Andrea Doria, the ill-fated Italian luxury liner. Next to it, it's a very good price on that Santa Claus. I think I'm reading $50. He's quite red-faced. It looks like somebody caught him in the cookies, but he is a paper mache candy container from Germany from the 1950s, and that is not a bad price at all for one that size. I always like the whole ebb tide here. This base is only $50, the maroon. It came in pink and blue and a greenish color as well. The Boyd Walk. Those were vultures, not buzzards. Ah. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now!